name is Alexandra Pappas. I'm a professor in the Department of Classics at San Francisco State University, and I'm also the Raoul Bertrand Chair in Classics. I'm really interested in the interactions between words and images in the ancient Greek world. The latest material that I treat is from the Hellenistic period, and there I examine the emergence of the first Western pattern poems. So those are more familiar to us from E.E. E. Cummings, for example, where the lines on the page uh, make an image um, that in some way connects to the poem. And in fact, this began in uh, ancient Greece, um, in the city of Alexandria, at the end of the fourth century BC. Letters and words themselves are being used as elements of visual and material communication. One of the courses that I'm teaching this semester is called Ancient Epic Tales. The course is specifically devoted to reading Homer's Iliad and Odyssey and then the Roman response to those Greek works by Virgil about 700 years later um, in his great epic poem, The Aeneid. I'm just trying to stay alive and take care of my people. Shit don't come with trophies. Ain't no envelopes to open. I just do it because I'm supposed to. Who's this? Aeneas, right? OK, so what especially connects to Aeneas's character from these lyrics? I start class with a song from contemporary hip hop or pop as a way to kind of have some entry into the text that was assigned for that day. And ideally, there are some themes that carry over from then till now and now back till then. The gods like made her fall in love and then just kind of like, Right. Yeah. It's kind of like when she has agency, it's only in the times when she can like it's in like really bad state. What do you feel duty to in your own lives? Is that honorable to you guys? That kind of tunnel vision focus on a goal, a duty bound goal. At this point, he just cares about his people, his race. My aim is to demonstrate the kind of the universal aspects of the human experience that are accessible through these texts that then they can start to see in their own daily lives. Like he has this ultimate end goal and like mine, mine will be to be to li be able to live comfortable. To be able to teach people how to read critically, whether that's a, a literary text or a material object, is to begin to learn or to train in how to read um, anything and everything critically. That's obviously an implication for Lavinia and Aeneas, but also for whom? What's the bigger message here? Rule. What's that? They shall rule. Who? The Romans. Yeah, the Romans. The, the ones reading this in the audience of this, the present day, the first century BC Romans. So it's also reinforcement for the citizens of Rome. They have a natural place leading the world in this imperial way. This is heavy, heavy politics and big time justification for the war that is required to execute that kind of empire and leadership. If that's not relevant to now, I don't know what is. I want to give people tools to uh, navigate these aspects of the kind of the common human experience of things that are difficult and confusing and complex and perplexing because those things aren't going to change. There are always going to be stresses and anxieties and challenges and the more tools in your toolkit the better and so that's what I'm trying to do and of course in that process I myself uh, continually refine and sharpen my own tools and so it's a really it's a symbiotic exchange for me. Mm -hmm.